Okay, so it's, it's it looks a, white. white. Okay, good. Well, happy happy Sunday morning to you, <laughs> and a happy Valentine's Day to you. Feliz domingo por la mañana y feliz día de San Valentín. Amen. So, Pastor Jose and Patricia, we want to welcome you at New Beginnings Church, other big men, a church you can call home where we honor God, love family, serve others, and pursue excellence. Bienvenidos a la Iglesia Nuevo Comienzo. We want to welcome our NBC family, all our visitors, and all of you that are joining us by audio and video. Amen. Amen. Prepare yourselves to receive what God has for you. Amen. He's got great things for you. He's not finished with you. Amen. He's not finished with you. Just see yourself the way he sees you. He sees you a winner, a champion, an overcomer. And you can do all of these things. Amen. So let's remember this. He wants to bless you, encourage you, change you, and he wants to correct you. Because he's our Heavenly Father. We're his children. And a father always corrects his children. Amen. So get yourself ready to receive our message today. If you're taking notes, it's about the gift of love. The best gift of love given. Amen. Uh -huh. So I know it's a few days ahead. We're a few days uh, ahead as, as far as uh, Valentine's. I know it's uh, Tuesday. But uh, it's going to be a uh, Valentine's message. So let's remember this and uh, be open to what God has for you. He's got something for you. Before we get going, let me read a little nugget for you. And this is for you. You receive it for yourself. Amen. It says, you're not here by accident. You're not here in this place by accident. You're not here in this world by accident, which people have been telling you. You know, I'm just a nobody. I'm just an accident. No, you're just an accident. Well, listen, you're not an accident. You were hand-picked by God and so that he can direct your steps to promote his kingdom and walk in true purpose. He knows you by name and he wants you to keep walking in faith. Amen. Listen. The world knows this, but God knows this better. He knows you better than anybody else. Yes, he knows amen. all your shortcomings. He knows all your mistakes. He knows all your failures and still loves you more than anybody else. Amen. So hear what Father wants to say. He wants to love on you and say, you're not here by accident. I handpicked you and I put you here so that you could fulfill what I want you to do. Now, you got to receive this for yourself, you know, because the world... People, family is going to tell you different. You're a mistake. You're here by accident. You're a nobody. You don't receive that. Amen. They didn't receive Jesus and they crucified him. Right. So what do you think they're going to say about you? You're in good company with Jesus. Amen. Because <laughs> we're on the winning team. So find out what the word of God says. Get into it and start pressing on with the things of God. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Can you say amen? Amen. We won't hold you long. Is that okay? Amen. <laughs> amen. That's a big amen. It's just, we're just going to hold you for, for a little bit. But receive what God has for you. Amen. So anyway, prepare yourselves. Let's, just, let's make this declaration together. Amen. Grab your sword. Grab your Bible. And let's say it like the mean in church. Amen. Here it is. This is my Bible. I have what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My spirit is receptive. And I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, this is good. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, you know, if so-and-so would have, would have been here, this is just good for them. Well, that so-and-so is not here. <laughs> but you're here. So you receive it for yourself. Amen. When you get full of the word, then you go out and share it with somebody else. Amen. Amen. So let's remember that. Ooh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. We're going to be talking about the best gift of love ever given. And here we go. John 3.16. If you have your Bibles, you can open them to John 3.16 and 17. A lot of times we read the 3.16, but we hardly ever read the 17. But today we're going to read both of them. John 3, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Amen. And uh, also says, Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. It says, For God so loved the world, or you could say people. World is people. What's it? What's in the world? People. Amen. So you know what? You can't go anywhere because everywhere you go, there's people. <laughs> For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Or uh, he gave his one and only son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let me join you and open it up to John 3.16. 
Are you there? Oh, yeah. Well, good. It says, and the King James says, For God shall love the world. He gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting, Everlasting life. life. Amen. And 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. saved. Amen. Yep. Ooh, hallelujah. He came and he completed his mission. But you know what? He wants you to complete your mission too. He put you here. He handpicked you. We read a few minutes ago. He handpicked you and put you here for you to complete your mission. And he's giving you all. He's, a, he's called you. He's anointed you. He's equipped you to fulfill whatever he's called you to do. So how do I find out? Well, you go to him and you ask him. Amen. But your hand to it and call of God. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Let me read what I wrote here. So God has his word, his scriptures, not just for Valentine's Day, but for every day of our lives. Amen. They are words of love for him. Uh, they are words of love from him and instructions for us to love him and to love others. So you know what? Happy Valentine's Day to you. I know it's Tuesday. So I know early happy Valentine's Day to you. You know, when we celebrate and we, we send gifts, we, we send uh we send we send we send gifts and we give gifts, amen. Some cards, some flowers, some candies, and sometimes of course we go to dinner. We let our spouses, we let our girlfriends, boyfriends, and our friends let them know how much we love them, you know. Let them know uh they're special to us, how much we appreciate them, amen. If you haven't done that, you need to. Father shows his love for us. How do he show his love for us? By sending the best love ever, ever given. Amen. And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the best thing. He, he gave his best. And Jesus knew and he agreed to come. And he came. So he, God gave his best. We need to give our best. You know, once we come to Christ, you know, and accept him as Lord and Savior, we must give our best, you know, because... Our flesh don't want to do that. Right. And this world doesn't want you to do anything. So we must renew our minds with the word of God. Yes. And we must keep our priorities in order. Priority number one, Jesus first. Amen. And then press on with, with, the, with the rest. But Father showed his love by sending the best love gift ever. His son Jesus. A love gift we can celebrate on a daily basis. Not once a year. <laughs> But on a daily basis, Lord, thank you. You know, when you open your eyes, that's the best thing you can, you, you can say is, Lord, thank you for waking me up. Amen. Thank you for the wake-up call. Amen. Man, you open your two eyes, you know, and that's the best miracle you can give, you know, by opening your eyes. He hasn't called you home yet, so you're still here. So honor him, you know, and, and honor him and spend time with him and then press out and go where he wants you to go and be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Man, we got a lot of good things to say. So just hang on because <laughs> uh, we're going for a ride. Amen. So we already saw uh, uh, John three sixteen on, on the screen there. Two of the scriptures I got for you. It says, take the word of the Lord into my heart. Ezekiel 3.10 so happy Valentine's Day, and may God bless you. And the, I treasure God's promise in my heart. Psalms 119.11. Happy Valentine's Day, and may God bless you. Amen. So praise God. Keep going there, Carmen. Says Jesus' best love gift is still the best ever given. Uh -huh. Amen. There's no comparison. He's the best gift ever given. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Oh, there you go. I got it in different uh, was John three sixteen and it, right down the middle, you just uh, they, the way they arranged it, it says Valentine. So happy Valentine's yeah, yeah. Day! Thank you. Keep going. I, I got a few of them. Here we go. A new King James says, "For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever you know you're that whoever He didn't forget about you. You're on here. You scratch that whoever and put your name on there. Yes." That Jose believes in him and should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I've accepted Jesus. Have you? You know, those of you watching, those of you are listening, if you have never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, now is the time. It's never too late. Amen. You know, it's time to quit letting being defeated, letting this world just dictate what you do. 
and receive him as Lord and Savior. Start living for him and start going for him. Let go and let God. Amen. Keep going, brother. Woo, hallelujah. Listen, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is called uh -huh. the love scripture or the love chapter. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we have 13, chapter 13 verses 4 through 8a. And it goes like this. If you've never read it, mark this down and read it for yourself. But it says that love is what? Patient yeah. and kind. Love does not envy or boast. Love is not arrogant or rude. Love, it does not insist on its own ways. You've got to do it my way. No, no. Love is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at a wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Here's the thing is, love never fails. Never. Amen. Praise God. Mark this down. Read it for yourself. Man, you can read this every day. Yes. Just to know that God sent his son. And he is our greatest gift. Amen. Our love gift. Amen. God sent. Woo. Thank you. Keep yeah, one more. Yeah. One more. There you go. All these little valentines for you. <laughs> uh, the expanded Bible says this. Um, John 15, 13 says, The greatest love of a person can show is to die for his friends. And nobody none of us want to die. <laughs> no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one friend. Jesus' death is the ultimate expression of his principle, of this principle. Amen? <coughs> and I've got it in several uh, uh, translations. I'm, the Amplified says this. No one has greater love nor stronger commitment than to lay down his own life for his friends. You are my friends. If you keep on doing what I command you, I do not call you servants any longer. For the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I call you my friends because I reveal to you everything that I have heard from my father. Uh -huh. So see, call yourself what he calls you. He says you're his children. He says you're my friends. Okay? Okay. Quit going around saying you're a sinner. You confessed Jesus a long time ago, and you're still going around calling yourself a sinner. You're a child of God now. Amen. So you don't have to stop calling yourself or stop. You can stop calling yourself that. You're not a sinner. I do sin. When I do sin, I go to the Father, and I ask for his forgiveness, and he forgives me. But when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're now a child of God. And he says, you are my friends now. Amen. So remember this. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And he's, he also says it's a command. Command is not just a suggestion. Command is something that you need to obey. Yeah. I spent many time, many, many years in the military. And when they give you a command, it's not for you to say, well, if I want to. <laughs> no. If you're disobedient. And we're going to talk about disobedience. When you're disobedient, you're going to suffer. And that's because you brought it on yourself. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Oh, got it again. It says, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Are you my friend? Pray for me. <laughs> they keep going. Amen. There we go. 2 Corinthians. We all know these. We just have to do them. Obey them. Says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that's anyone scratch on your Bible and just put your name on there. Personalize your Bible, highlight your Bible, underline words, do all these things. Personalize your Bible, okay? Make it for you, okay? So praise God. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? A new creation. It says, old things are what? Passed away. Passed away. Behold, all things have become God. new. It's a new year. Is a new me. Amen. I'm a new child of God right now. Amen. So, so are you. I'm a new creature. The old is gone. You know what the enemy, you know what the world tries to do? They try to put all the old stuff on you. They still remember you as an old you. And they're going to bring all the past. You say, wait a minute. You're talking to the wrong person. I don't live there anymore. Amen. I've got a new address. My address is heaven bound. Amen. Amen. So let's remember this. You go, you go tell the Father, you know, I confess everything to the Father. He knows about it, so you go talk to him. <laughs> Come on. Uh -huh. Woo, hallelujah. Yeah, Thank you, Lord. <laughs> new Living Version says this. If any man belongs to Christ, he's a new person. The old life is gone. 
new life has begun. The new love life as his children. We are new creatures in Christ. You're a new creature in Christ. Amen. You had a, well, we're going to be talking about this here in a few minutes, but you had a spiritual awakening. You had a spiritual birth. The Amplified says this, you new love creatures of God. Keep going. Okay, let's stop right there. 2 Corinthians 5.17, the Amplified says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, engrafted in, joined to him by faith as Savior, he is a new creature. So if I call you a creature, don't get mad. <laughs> You're a new creature. Listen, you're reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual conditions have passed away. Yes. The enemy, people, will bring it to you over and over and over. And they want to down you. And they want to say negative things about you. Don't let them do that because I'm not receiving that anymore. I confess it. He's forgiven me and forgot about it. So you need to do the same thing. Even though people remind you, even though the enemy reminds you, says, that's past. It's gone. It's gone, gone, gone. Old things, the previous moral and spiritual conditions have passed away. They're gone. Behold, new things have come. Spirit, you have a spiritual awakening. You had a spiritual birth. Brings a new life. I just wrote this. You had a spiritual reborn. And we call in, in the Christian community, we call them, you're born again. Yes. Well, how can I be born again? Spiritually, you were born again. You're a new creature in Christ. <coughs> Remember this, okay? Amen. Because people are going to try to tell you these things. Romans 5 says, Five, uh, excuse me, 5 and 5 says this And hope makes not ashamed Because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts By the Holy Ghost Which is given to us Amen Let me read what I've got on here It says no, Now hope does not uh, disappoint Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts By the Holy Spirit Who gives given to us And the easy to read version I'll read it to you In, uh, in the easy to read version It says and this hope will never disappoint us. We know this because God has poured out his love to fill our hearts through the Holy Spirit that he gave you. Amen. He's given us the Holy Spirit. Yes. And he's with us. He says, I must go. He says, but when I go, he says, I'll send the Holy Spirit. And we have the Holy Spirit. Amen. When you receive Christ, you receive his Holy Spirit. So God has been given, excuse me, we have been given God's love for our daily walk in life. Seeing things with his love and his compassion. You have the greater one in you. Wherever you go, you fill yourself with God. You fill yourself with the word so that you can see things with his eyes. Yes, his love and his compassion. Woo, man, it's going to get better. <laughs> amen. We're his loving children. Loving, accepting, and forgiving. We're ministers of reconciliation. His ambassadors. You're God's mouthpiece on earth. We are the church. Yes. Amen. This is not the church. This is a building where we assemble ourselves together. We are. You need to know we are the church. You are part of the church. You are the church. You are part of the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Woo. And he want, that's what he used. He's the head and we're the body. Yes. So he's going to use his body to do his thing. Amen. And he wants to use you. Don't let nobody tell you that God can use you. Show me scripture. Okay, where does it say that? There's no, no, that's a lie. We're minister of reconciliation, his ambassadors, his mouthpiece. Listen, bringing good news to an ungodly, unloving, impatient, rage filled world, a dark world. And we're bringing this good news, we're bringing this light. Amen. That's what you are. Wherever you happen to go, I'm the light of Christ going somewhere. In this light, in this dark world, Amen. lighten up wherever you go, Amen. Man, when you start believing the word and doing the word, man, things will change. And He's seeing you just like this, and you need to see yourself that way. First John four seven and eight. Here we go. It says, "Beloved, that's you, that's us, believers. Let us love one another, for the love is a." For the love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, 
and knoweth God, but he, but 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 excuse me, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Love, amen. So if if you know God, you're gonna know love, and we need to start doing this and practicing this. If you don't know Him, you won't, you won't know. Him. That's what the Word of God says. Yep. Let me see. Let me read it like like I wrote it here. Dear brothers, dear friends, says New Living Translation. Let's continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who love is born of God and knoweth God. But anyone that does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love for us in uh, it is agape love. Amen. Yes. Unconditional love. Any other love is conditional. I love you if you do this. God's love, agape love, is unconditional. I think I give you uh, uh, a few uh, few types of love. It says four types of love. This is just in the Bible. Is the Greek words, and uh, may not pronounce them right. So you can help me though. Eros love is sensual or romantic. Storge is a family type love. And uh, Philia is a brotherly love. And uh, Agape is God's love. Unconditional love. Okay, so that's different loves. You know, somebody says they love you. Everybody in this world just uses love as one. Right. Okay? But that's not the love they're talking about. For God so loved the world, we're talking about Agape love. Unconditional love. He loves you without the conditions. There's no conditions there. The world loves you. The world loves you. But there's conditions if you do this. If you do that. You know. So let's remember this. Woo. Get to know your loving Heavenly Father. Have relationship with Him. Amen. Spend time with Him. Study. Meditate on the Word. Grow in the Word. Yes. When you grow, <laughs> you change. Amen. And the Bible says that us believers, we're going to step out in faith. But we walk by faith and not by sight. Yep. Because if you're not a born again believer and you're not filled with the word, you're going to just walk by sight and everything you see while well, you believe only what you see. But we're walking by faith and believing what God tells us to. Amen. 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 Praise God. So imitate, your father, imitate him. Spend time with him. Imitate him. Ephesians, uh, we're going to have this in a few minutes. But Ephesians uh, 5, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 in the Amplified. And we're also going to see it in the New Living Translation. I could never love that person. That's what we say. I could never love that person, man. I got a lot of hate for them. You don't know what they've done. Well, yeah. But you got to get out of your flesh and get Christ in you. Yeah, same. Yeah. And think about this. We used to say this all the time. What would Jesus do? It's not about what's his name, uh, Gerald John, uh, Doug. What's his name? The guy here in Marco. Donald, Donald. Yeah, it's not that. It's, it's about what would Jesus do? They use this and put his name on there. No, nope. <laughs> be imitators of Christ. You can change. Just what would Jesus do? Think about that. Would Jesus do what you're doing? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Attitudes and flat, uh, flat tires. Can't go anywhere until you change them. Right. We got to change our attitude. Nobody wants that attitude you've got. And you know you got a bad attitude. We need to change that. How you want people to follow you and your attitude is not even right. We got to change it. How do we change it? We get in the Word. And we renew our minds with the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Here we go. I give you, I'm giving you a lot of little hearts here. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 2 says this in the New Living Trans. Well, it's coming up. It says, therefore, be imitators of God. We know we try to imitate everybody in this world. Everybody, why every one of us has different people or different ones we love to imitate. But we never think about imitating Christ. If you're a born again believer, you should be imitating your God. Amen. Not just somebody in the world. Nobody in this world is greater than our God. Amen. Come on. Say amen. All right. Amen. <laughs> Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly beloved children and walk in love as the Messiah also loved us and gave himself for us, a sacrificial and fragrant uh, offering to God. 
Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Keep going. There we go. New Living Translation says, imitate what? God. God, imitate God. You need somebody to imitate? Imitate your God. How are you going to imitate your God? You're going to get in His Word, and you're going to find all about God. And start imitating Him and what His Word says. And therefore, in everything you do, not just in some things, in everything. And if you don't, He knows. <laughs> because you are His dear, dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the examples of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us. A pleasing aroma of God. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Mark these down and you go find them yourself. But listen, it says an example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself. I told you this, this is uh, Jose's interpretation, but there was a meeting in heaven. And the father called the son, and the son came and said, Son, I want my people back, so I'm going to send you, and I'm going to sacrifice you. And Jesus says, Okay. <laughs> you wouldn't agree to that if he knew he was going to be sacrificed. Jesus agreed, and he came. And he fulfilled his mission. And he says, You could do the same thing. And he showed us examples. So he's our, he's our greatest examples, and we need to imitate him. It we're going to fulfill. Amen. Otherwise, the world and things, distractions will knock you off from not fulfilling what he's called you to do. And words <coughs> and people will share with you and tell you things to discourage you and try to have you stop. Say, stop. No. Not if, not if he says no. Keep going. Let me read it from here. It says, imitate God therefore in everything you do. Why? Because you are his dear children, saved and born again. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. God made you an original. Don't copy anyone or die a copy for nobody. Right, amen. Be who God made you to be. And he didn't make you to be junk. He didn't make you to be all these other things the world says. He made you to be a winner. Amen. So see yourself the way God sees you. Don't copy the world people or their ways. We can change. It's a new year. We can change. Amen. We can change. So just remember that. Tell yourself, you know, I'm going to change. It's always been this way. Your family's always been this way. Your tradition is always this way. No. It's going to stop right here. It's going to change right now. Amen. Imitate Jesus. Demonstrate your agape love and love and compassion. When people see you, well, let me read it. It says, your love and compassion to the fatherless, the homeless, the sick and diseased, the rejected, those in sin, and those that are lost. Amen. What would Jesus do? Jesus loved, accepted, forgave, and he had compassion. Amen. Listen to this. This world needs to see the difference. Christ in us. The love and compassion of God coming through us. Yes. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yes. You care? People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Do you care? You know? You say you care, but what's coming out of your mouth is totally different. You pick people down instead of picking people up. Ooh, come Amen. on. <laughs> World versus believers. What's the difference? The love of God. The love for one another. We are to love one another just as the Father loves us. Unconditionally. Not only in church buildings. Not only playing church in here. Man, I can just... Oh, man, I can say so many loving things to you right now. You know, oh, man, we just... So, you know, so nice. We walk out these walls, you know, we're somebody else. We, we got to stop playing church. Yes. Yeah, Remember, I've told, I've told you this before. We're not an audience here to be entertained. We're an army of God coming here to be empowered so we yeah. can go into the world and, and, and dominate. Amen. We're an army of God. You're the army of God. We're the body of Christ. Army of God 
and being empowered so we can go and do what God has called us to do. And you're a part of it. Amen. So see yourself there when you got a part in this. Woo! Amen. <laughs> We're playing church outside these four walls. And they're <clears throat> out there. We all have different missions, mission fields, jobs to go and be. We're as ministers of reconciliation. You go one way, I go another way. But you minister to those in your side, and I'll minister to those on my side, and so on and so on. And we're getting the word of God preached out there. We're, getting, we're, we're ministering to the lost people again. Again, don't people don't care how much you know until they see how much you care. Do you care? Let his flow, let his love flow from you. Let his compassion flows from you. We believers must love and care for each other. Amen. Yes. It's getting better. <laughs> Hebrews, mark this down. Hebrews 10, uh, verses 24 and 25. I'm going to read it to you from the easy to read version. It says this. Help each other and be strong. Church, we got to complete one another. We complete one another. We raise each other. We say nice things to each other, encourage one another, and not compete. Yeah. We try to bring the world into the, our assembly and say, well, what is it you do? What about this and what about that? And we're trying to compete instead of complete one another. Let me tell you something. God says he's pleased with you. Amen. God told me to tell you this and encourage you. We're helping one another and completing one another to step up to new levels because as you grow new levels new devils but i'm growing in the things of god amen praise god we're lifting each other up and encouraging one another and not competing and challenging one another you know and putting each other down amen. but hebrews 10 25 and 20 uh, 24 and 25 says we should think about each other to see how we can encourage each other and to show love and do good works 25 says we must quit meeting we must not quit meeting together as some are doing no we need to keep on encouraging each other this becomes more and more important as you see the day getting closer yes closer of his return yes and we must encourage one another you know why because go to the last one Carmen. bring the last one up all the way to the end There we go. The last days. Mark that down. This is uh, in, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Verses 1 through 14 I think it is. But it says what? In the last days because people will be lovers of self. Lovers of money. Boastful. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Ungrateful. Ungodly. Unholy. Excuse me. Unloving. Arrogant. Irritable. What was it say? Reconcilable. Reconcilable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, without love, for what is good, traitors, reckless, uh, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than those of God, holding to the form of religion, but denying the power, uh, let alone by the variety of passions, lust, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. This is what we go up against each and every day. And it's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse. So we need to feed ourselves and get ourselves strong because this is what we're coming up against. Remember that devil's mission. Steal, kill, destroy. Jesus says, I come that you might have life and have it more abundant. Amen. But you got to live in his word. You got to live in his love. Amen. Otherwise, all these things you're facing. There's only one enemy. It's the devil, not your fellow Christians out there, not people, the same people that he died for. He died for you and you're saved, but the same people that are still lost have not heard and have not converted over. Right. They're not reconciled. We need to get out there and reconcile them back to him. Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Love one another and we will win people for uh, Jesus. Your words, your actions will show. Amen. Loving one another. We make it hard because we have excuses for not loving. 
God, you don't know this person. <laughs> that person is not lovable. We know he knows our best. He knows our worst and still loves us the best. We never, we never have a good report about anyone. I don't go to church here because that person goes there. If you find the perfect church, you going there makes it imperfect. Yes. Let's remember this. Okay? And I don't go to church because it's a big church. I don't go to church because whatever. I go to church here because that's where God wants me to go. Uh -huh. And don't let nobody talk you out because even in the Christian community, we try to steal sheep. Yes. You say, man, you can come to our church. You know, this is, we know we have all kinds of entertainment. entertainment. Remember, we're not there to be entertained. We're there to be empowered. Hey. You know, and we steal sheep because <laughs> more money. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're not doing it for that. Our God supplies all our needs. Amen. Praise God. Let's remember that. We're a small church with a big God. Yes. And he's bigger than anything. He says he's bigger than any mountain. Amen. So, or bigger than any problems you might have. I don't go there because they go there. Well, <laughs> if that's a perfect church and you go there, it makes it imperfect. Come on now. Can I hear right. an amen? <laughs> right. If you don't go to church, you automatically choose to go to hell. It's your choice. When you listen and you watch it, if you never accepted Christ, just to say, well, I'm not going to be a part of that. If you even if you don't choose him, you've chosen the world and you've chosen the enemy and you chose to go to hell. Nobody's going to send you there except yourself. Because you need to confess him as your Lord and Savior and go to heaven. If you don't do that and just be neutral, lukewarm, then you're going to send yourself to hell. Nobody right. told you that. You make that choice yourself. No one is good enough or lovable. <laughs> I know their past. Change and obey. Jesus died for them too. Yes. Amen. Remember that. Jesus died for them too. They're ungodly, unlovable, impatient, rude. But still, he died for them. They need to hear the good news from you. They need to see uh, uh, the love and compassion through you. They need to see your the imitation of Christ in you come to them. You're the closest thing to a Bible some will ever see or be around or hear. That's why not everybody's going to come to this church building or this uh, building where we assemble ourselves together. We got to meet them out where they're at. Amen. But you're out there, and don't share, don't get into their ugly conversations. Get into bring your good news and share with them, and bring the church. You're the church coming to them. Right. Reconcile them them to him. I have a friend sitting back there, Scott. He used to go to a church. It's called Under the Bridge. They used to meet under the bridge, highways, under bridges. And they had church. Bringing the homeless, bringing people that are hurting out there that nobody wants anything to do with. Bringing them to Christ. Amen. But you know you're in the right place when you have God in you. You have something to share. I've got something to share. Amen. You know? So just remember that. You've got something. Don't see yourself a loser. See yourself a winner. He, he, he put you here to be a winner, not a loser. Amen. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, uh, Jesus died for them. And you know what? Here's the thing. Your salvation is free. But they got to hear it to receive it. And they have to confess it with their mouth. Amen. Remember John 3 16, for God so loved the world. We're talking about people here. John 13, 35, uh, 34 and 35 says, A new commandment. I give you a new commandment. Love each other. You must love each other just as I love you. All people will know that you are my followers if you love each other. <coughs> we must walk in this love. His his love. Command is not a suggestion. Command is a commandment is a command from our Heavenly Father. It's our choice to obey or disobey. But you have to stand before Him one day. 
yes. and explain to him why you didn't receive it. Why you didn't do what he called you to do. Well, I didn't know. I just lukewarm, you know, and I just saw the side by myself so I wouldn't make nobody mad, nobody, you know, say, no, now you got to see. I, I put you there to be a winner. I put you there to do this, and you chose not to. Amen. Listen to this. <laughs> it's our choice to obey or disobey. Lucifer, an archangel, leader of the heavenly praise and worship, was kicked out of heaven for disobeying. Yes. He wanted to see himself over God. And man, he was he was sent out of there like lightning. Boom. Yep. He was gone. That's how quick he was he was gone. <laughs> Adam was kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Why? For disobeying. If it's this woman, no, it ain't about this woman. You was in charge. You could have said something. He says, Won't you take some of this fruit? Oh, okay. No, he says, Don't. He told us not to touch that. He could have stopped it, but he didn't. And he disobeyed. And he was out of the garden. Moses never set foot in the promised land. Why? He disobeyed. Uh -huh. This is a promised land. God has given it to us. And we send spies and come back with some negative reports and, and two positive reports. And still, but he disobeyed. So you will not touch the promised land. Yep. Just some, some examples. We must obey his commandments and love one another when he wants us to. We're not going to get too, uh, too much further with this and uh, we can finish next week. But the fruit of our salvation is his love. The evidence of your salvation is the God kind of love. The agape love. Yes. Amen. Unconditional love. Listen to this. If we love our Christian brothers and sisters, it proves that we have passed from death unto eternal life. A person who has no love is spiritually dead. Yes. And we're talking about physically. We're talking about spiritually dead. When you come into a relationship with our Heavenly Father, we receive His kind of love. We must begin to share this good, this new kind of love. Start loving. Start flowing in love, acceptance, and forgiveness towards one another, including the lost. The Father wants us to extend the same love, acceptance, and forgiveness to others. Jesus died for our sins and for those who sinned against us or against him. Mercy is greater than judgment. Mercy is God's highest law. Be quick to forgive, extend mercy, and show to slow, excuse me, be quick to forgive, extend mercy, and slow to anger. We can do this if we focus on God's mercy towards yes, us. Amen. We're in now. We don't want nobody else to come in. Well, it's there for everybody. But they have to reject them. <clears throat> they have to either uh, receive him or, or, or disobey him. <clears throat> Or instead of how somebody wronged us. You know we're holding this thing. For years. And years and years and years. Let it go. Yes, amen. It's, it's hurting you. It's keeping you from God. Let it go. You know what? He knows how to deal with it. Give it to him. Cast it on him. And he can deal with it. And he knows what's best. Amen. Amen. Yeah. They wronged Jesus. He forgave and forgot. So can we. You know, they wronged him. He never sinned. And they still crucified him. Yes. But before he gave up and back to the Father, he told him, forgive him. Forgive him, you know. So if he can do this, he wants us to do the same thing. You know, forgive and forget. Let go and let God. Give it to God. Give all your cares to God, for He cares about you. Learn to love one another, and we will win souls. If you love one another, we will win the whole Big Bend area. Amen. Marfa, Alpine, Presidio, whichever where you're from, Fort Davis, we'll win this area for God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. 
we can just love, if we can just love those people in our church, we'll be okay. No. We gotta love with the God kind of love. Amen. We need to flow in love and mercy towards other churches and people who might have different teachings than us. We are all the body of Christ. We are all his church. Remember, no division in the body of Christ. The physical body operates in unity. The body of Christ must also operate in unity. We won't be effective witnesses for Christ until we stop fighting with each other. Make changes. Make change and make God glad and the devil mad. You got to remember Amen. this. You need to write this down. You got to change will make God glad and the devil mad because he wants you to be this way. People want you to be this way. Don't you go changing them. You know, you got to be this way. But when you change according to what the word of God tells you, you start walking in the word. It's going to make God glad and the devil mad yes. because he lost you. And when he come back to try to get you back, you say, no, I'm not going there anymore. You say, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. I'm going to resist him because the word is in me and it's flowing out of me. And I'm going to resist him. I'm going to take authority and say, I have authority over you. An archangel kicked out of heaven. Uh -huh. But I've got, we've got authority over him. And we speak to him. What do we speak to him? The word of God. Jesus defeated the enemy. And we know that we can put him on the, on the run. Amen. Fight the enemy, not believers, and those around you, and those that are lost. So you fight the enemy. I'm going to stop right there, and I hope you got something. Did you get yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> praise God. May, we, may God glad and the devil mad. Amen. Uh -huh. So praise God. Let's remember this. Praise God. Thank you. Those of you that are watching, if you haven't this year accepted Christ, now is the time. It's never too late. Amen. So all you have to do is just say, Lord, I sin against you. I repent. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. And he will. And he'll embrace you and say, now, go and start learning my word. Go and start loving on people, you know, and start growing in the things of God. Go to a Bible-based church where they teach the word of God. Go and learn what his word says and then go and Bring it to the lost world. Right. Amen. Yeah, yeah. But you can do all things through Christ. Amen. So let's remember this. If you have sickness in your body, and continue to pray for Patricia. If you have sickness in your body, remember that by Jesus Christ you're healed. So I just come against any malfunctions in your body, any sicknesses in your body, according to the word of God. It says, by his stripes you're healed. So I speak healing over your bodies in Jesus' name. Amen. And body line up with what the word of God says. Amen. And be function and uh, operate as God created you to operate and right. function in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So praise God. And it's time to give. So, those that are watching, just go to our website, nbcbigben.com and hit that donate button. If you're mailing it, uh, you can mail it to uh, NBC PO Box 252, Marfa, Texas, 79843. And uh, Cash App, at New Beginnings Church of the Big Ben. Remember, have a happy Valentine's Day. Remember, he's our happy Valentine. He's Amen. the greatest gift. He's our greatest love gift ever given. Amen. So have a have a blessed day. Amen. And uh, go Chiefs. Praise God. <laughs> God loves you and we love you. Amen. <laughs>